Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I wanted to share with you a new art journal spread inspired by the current topic at Paper Artsy blog, which is coral. I pulled out all my tea stamp sets, ESC 13, 14, 15 and 16, as well as the stencil PS105 and after some simple but very time-consuming techniques, this is the result. It's a long video, so you can get a cup of tea and join me in the creation of this vintage botanical tea garden in shades of coral. Ok, let's get started with the art journal. First I'm going to use some chalk paint by Paper Artsy. This is an acrylic paint, which is like a gesso. Ok, so I'm going to just use it to cover different parts, especially the titles, which are, well, too outstanding for my taste and I'm going to just use my fingers to spread all the paint so either from the mat to the page or directly onto the page that will give me a first coverage which is pretty thick and now I'm going to water it down with some water just to create a more translucent look and cover a bit less I'm speeding at the process very much so it's not very boring, okay? So I'm doing that all over the pages and I'm leaving on purpose the edges without any paint or very little paint, okay? Now I'm heat setting everything and setting aside. Okay, now I'm going to stamp on smoothie paper by Paper Artsy using the stamping platform. This will be very helpful. And what I'm going to do is basically stamping with VersaFine Claire, which is a waterproof ink because we will work with water later on that piece of paper. It's an A4, okay? And I'm just making sure that I stamp properly. If I don't stamp properly, then I'll basically just ring my stamp and press harder until I actually get a proper image. So I'm going to stamp all the images over there until I create basically, I don't know, a pattern. It seems like a puzzle here because I'm, well, putting as much images as I can in one single piece of paper. You can do it in different pieces of paper and take your time and, well, don't, don't use them much, but I thought it was also nice to see all together in the same page. From here I'm just using the lace and from here all the florals and the butterfly. So again I'm pulling all the stamps that I need and I'm stamping as I can. And, well, it's just stamping. I could have avoided this, but I thought it was nice to see all the elements that I'm using and as you will all be able to see I'm using that tea plant like three times or so and that will give me all the leaves that I have so all stamped now and now I'll move on to vellum and I'm going to create three butterflies in vellum I'm basically going to emboss this later with some wow embossing powder in gold so I can add some touches of gold to my art journal spread this ink is perfect for this sort of thing. It's because, um, apart from being waterproof, it dries very little by little. So basically you have lots of time to actually apply an embossing powder and it will stick to the ink so you have time to melt it down. And I'm doing the same here with the spoon. So now I get the wow embossing powder, that super fine detail gold, and then I'm just heat setting it with the heat tool and it becomes shiny. So I'm doing the same with the butterflies. It's been a while since I actually uh, stamped these, but as you can see, this is still wet and I have no problem and the actual powder stays perfectly okay and sticks to the paper. So now, because vellum is so thin, I'm going to just um, put it with some tweezers against that piece of craft sheet and then I'm going to heat set them. They become shine. Don't overcook them, that's very uh, difficult to burn the vellum. And now I'm going to move on to the next step. And this is stamping with infusions, as I did in my previous art journal spread. So I'm going to use Orange County, which for me was the closest shade to coral, living coral, which was the Pantone coat. And yeah, I'll stamp. As you can see, my stamp set falls, so I'm using Versamark ink on top of my um, acrylic block to so make sure that the stamp clings on it 
and I'm just stamping randomly here and there to add some interest to my background. Then some more um, infusions, spritzing with water around directly onto the page. You will see that it sticks more on the outside because the surface is porous, it doesn't have paint and it's more subtle in the middle where there is paint and the surface is porous. So everything hit set, I'll set it aside and move on to watercoloring all my images. So again, orange county with water diluted and then applied with a brush. Very carefree because I'm gonna fuzzy cut all of this. Yes, all of this, you heard it right. That was a time consuming bit. <laughs> and I'm basically using first like a mid-tone of this orange coral color if you want to call it and then yes I'm, I'm selecting some of those images to be painted with that shade the good thing about infusions and coloring with them or water coloring with them is that you just need a tiny bit amount some water and there you go you have watercolor instantly and well if you run out of it it's as simple as putting a bit more on the craft sheet spread some more water and there you go so I'm just adding a bit more and here I added far more water so I have a lighter version and I'm going to work as well with a more intense color afterwards so adding just a bit more to the existing water and then I'll just add more color to other plants so basically consider that I'm using three shades mainly one that is medium the other one that is light and then the well darker one and then apart from those colors, I'm also using white as a bit of contrasting and also another color that I've never used or almost never used, which is a bit jaded and that will be my green. So after I'm finished with the orange county and coloring everything and adding all those uh, darker shades in all the places, basically I'm respecting if a flower of this shape is um, dark then I paint them all in dark and then the different types of flowers if it's light then all those flowers are all light so I don't know that will add some coherence to the whole thing then I'm adding some of that um, color to the spoon as well and then to some flowers and there Okay, and then the butterflies in the vellum, instead of coloring from the front, you better turn it the other way around and coloring from the back. And don't use too much water because vellum what shrinks and deforms and it's not that nice. <laughs> so be very careful. And now I'm using a bit jaded for contrast, as I said, and for the leaves. So I'm not sure about which shade of a green I want, so I'm playing around and testing it there. And it originally started with this one, but it was too pale. And you'll see that I will intensify it a bit more. And because infusions are, well, a uh, dye base um, medium and you add water, you can always add layer after layer of color and build up your color as you need it. And with that same a bit jaded color, I'm going to use it in some parts of other elements that I will fuzzy cut as well. So then I have, well, that will be my palette. The orange tones, the white, the gold and the um, turquoise. So now it's time for cutting everything. Don't worry, I will not make you suffer all the cutting. I'm just seeing you here how I cut these um, tea set uh, I mean this postage uh, cloud because I think it's easy to know that if you cut in the middle then you can divide the rest of the pieces like that and it's super easy and quick and then well a few days later literally a few days later <laughs> I have everything cut and then it's uh, time for creating my own embellishments so I'm picking also that stamp which is like a label and I'm selecting a word from that tea cloud that I cut before. Green tea matches, so I'm using that one. And again, I'm embossing this, this is vellum again, like the butterflies. So using the same kind of um, embellishments here and there makes all your um, 
spread a bit more coherent, right? So I was same that I did for the butterflies, I did it for the label basically. So after heat setting it and let it cool down a bit, I'm just fussy cutting it. And then I have a little window for my garden green tea. Okay, originally I was planning to actually cut that off, but I like the the way that it looked and it was a bit faded. So yeah, I decided to go for it. And I decided to put it green because it was going to be mounted on top of um, orange. So I'm playing around with this color combination all the way through the spread. Now I'm making sure that it fits under there. Then with a piece of cell tape, I'm just adhering it and making it ready for my collage. I'll use cell tape a lot, you'll see because otherwise it was impossible. I mean, all the little pieces were moving so much that it was <laughs> literally impossible to have like all put there and then said, okay, here we go. So I decided to, you'll see, use the cell tip a lot to create three clusters, but I'm advancing myself. Okay, now I'm creating the title. I'm using the same ink on top of a piece of heavy cardstock. Um, this is a heavier version of the paper that I used before. It's just that I had it there. Uh, so I used it, it was a scrap piece. And then I'm only embossing the crown and the teapot. And the rest will remain, well, brown. So that's the good point. If you, instead of that, you use the Versamark ink, which is transparent, and you want two colors, well, you wouldn't be able to do that unless you heat emboss them in different colors, right? But since you're using Versafine Clear, and by default, this is brown, if you don't emboss it, you get brown. If you emboss it, you get the color you embossed. Okay, now I have my sentiment there. Very nice and clean. Too nice to clean. <laughs> so let's get it dirty. I'm going to use here a technique that I learned from Seth Apter on how to cut stuff. So I'm using my acrylic block, which is very rigid, very sturdy. And then I'm basically tearing apart that piece of paper. And that gives me a very sharp or rather um, straight line but then I can still make it frayed make it um, raw edge right so then you can see those on all the edges and that will grasp more color than the rest and will add this aged look if I was repeating this again probably I would just do that on top and bottom and maybe leave the edges the left and right without tearing apart that may look nice too. So now I'm just adding some infusions on top with the brush, some drops that act like a bleach. So if you, while well, the surface is wet, if you add some water, the water reacts like bleach with infusions, only when it's a bit wet, otherwise it will not react when it's dry. And I'm adding some more touches. I will be testing this against my uh, spread and then adding more color as and when I think it's needed. So I think it's too pale and I'm going to just add some splashes and some more color. So first an overall layer to make it a bit darker and then with a brush I'm going to just add some splashes. So I'm adding splashes to my background and then I'm also adding splashes to the title. And then I'll make sure that I remove the splashes that I don't like or I, that I think they're in the middle. So basically I don't want anything in the embossing. I want the embossing to be clear. So I'll set that aside and then I'll work on the background. So all those pieces are very clean and very, well, nice. <laughs> but now it's time for adding the vintage touch and I'm using Distress Ink. This one is a tea dye, I think it's called. And then I'm using it on the edges to make sure that they are not showing white and also to make sure that I have a shade of brown around it. And now I'm going to create that um, Tower of Cups, which I had in mind when I actually was creating this um, stamp set when I designed it for Paper Artsy. So I knew that I wanted to do at some point an art journal spread with a, with a well, Tower of, of Cups somehow. So what I'm doing here is basically removing part of the back of that um, cup with a scissor and this is to allow the other cup to fit in. 
yeah you see that there and also for me to add some vintage um, I mean some um, distress ink on the edges doing the same trick there and I'm just cutting where I know that the next cup will cover so basically in the middle <laughs> and in some ink and then I pile one on top of the other and then I'll put a spoon over there so I have one spoon hanging from each side and I'm using more cell tape to keep everything in place so this is the starter of my cluster but I will do some more tricks to these cups so I'm going to turn them well twist them a little bit so they begin a bit more round so more like a cup shape and then what I'm going to do is adding some of foam adhesive on the top of each cup so it seems that well they stand a little bit and the top of each cup is um, well wider than the bottom of the previous one let's say so it seems that one fits into the other and then I'm going to do a trick over there as well as I did on the other ones just to make sure that well the back of this cup is a bit more on the back than the front uh, you could easily do this by stamping this twice and basically while well, doing some overlapping there and just let's say you stamp twice and then the top layer uh, you remove the, the back part and then that's where you put the, the foam adhesive but I did this trick just because I don't want to fuzzy cut more <laughs> and then now I'm shaping all those um, flowers so with my fingers and also using foam adhesive to mark it with a round brush and I'm aging those stamps as well with some water and with my nails and twisting some of those uh, corners adding some of that ink just aging them as I did in the past for another art journal spread that I click on the screen right now it was about sewing and here I'm showing you the 3D effect that I achieved just by um, well, using my hands I don't know if it's very noticeable or not but the first flower is not flat it's 3d and I did that by just using my nails and try to squeeze that flower some petals up some petals down so I actually get well that little shape and the other one is flat and I'm going to shape it now so as I said um, it's like pinching the flower over there so some petals are up and others are down so this is almost real time now it's not real time that's a speed up so you can see if i took so much detail on well almost every flower it took me ages okay i mean it was fun because then i was thinking about something else you know it's like a therapy right you just start doing this and then you can think on other stuff i also applied some on there you can see from the back uh, the volume that i gave and the butterflies i'm showing here as well you just comb those uh uh, wings and then you can apply foam adhesive in the part that it's well more outstanding and then the rest will be glued to the paper uh, like that and you can even comb that uh, spoon and you could even add some sugar and sugar could be your UT so ultra thick animal powder mixed with some more podge or mud medium and put it there but I left it empty so after I finish arranging everything, I have these three clusters and some butterflies which are running free. Those uh, two and then the super big one there with some butterflies. I'll stick the butterflies at the very end. So with those three clusters, then I know where they are sit now. So I can do the final touch to my background, which is going to be stenciling with some paint. So once I know that it's there, I take end of a picture and then I use my stencil and I stencil around with cayenne fresco paint. I had uh, two paints in my mind, you will see that I'll test them, but cayenne I think matches better. So I started marking with a pencil, but then at some point you can skip that totally and then just use your clusters as a base and then you put them there, you know what it's uh, showing through, so you know where to put your paint. And I'm doing a test here, so in the part that it's not seen, I'm using first cayenne to see the amount of paint that I need to apply with a brush. So now it's too heavy, I need to apply less, like that. I 
kind of like it. I need a bit more dark, but you can build up layers. And then I'm testing also Scottish Salmon, another new by Paper Artsy. And just to see which one matches better, my Orange County. And I think that Cayenne is better for this one. So I'm using that one from the two. So I'm going to start uh, going applying um, that stencil part everywhere. All the stenciling words. And well, I'll speed up the process a lot. Will be a madness of a speed, but well, you'll get the hang of it. And anyway, it's just applying the stencil so it's peeking through. It's not meant to be uh, red or anything. It's just to apply another a layer and more depth to my design. And also the idea is to keep some white, so I don't go through all over the page, just under where those clusters are. So I'm just placing them there, knowing which words I can just use. And if I kind of like some of it, like, I don't know, Earl Grey, I like it to come, or matcha or something, and then I make sure that actually these are readable if I like them. If not, that's totally fine. You don't need to read anything. Just as I said, it's a background, so it just needs to look nice. <laughs> so I'm going to place those there. And once I'm happy, then I'll move on and stick everything in place. Just to see how the beta flares look like. And then Mod Podge goes into the picture. You could use any other sort of glue. But I'm using Mod Podge because it dries very quickly. And then it's matte, medium. Um, so it will not shine at all. So it will look like if it's never been there. But it will also apply... Um, well, a nice thick layer that will make my papers more sturdy and also waterproof. Uh, so that allows me also to work with um, distressed crayons and move them with my finger very easily if the surface is um, non porous all the way, including the edges. Yep. And that will be to apply some shadows. So basically, I'm applying the Mod Podge everywhere and um, while I put things into place, I try to keep the volume by squeezing some leaves, for instance, or by making sure that my butterflies stay with the wings um, twisted. So I'm just doing an effort there to make them not flat. And I will slow down the process in the last ones or in the last bad ones so you can see what I mean. So basically, I just remove um, the paper from the foam then apply uh, glue in three parts, so the two wings and the body, and then I press into three parts that I have glue down. Be patient, make sure that it sticks, and then a layer on top. And well, basically I glue like that all my elements, and that needs to a little bit of care. So it took a while also to dry all this in place and glue everything together. So final touches of Mod Podge to cover up my page, make it sturdier, and make sure that it doesn't move. And then now it's time for adding final touches of shadow. I'm using the Stress Carrion, the vintage photo one. So I apply directly to the page and then with a brush and water or with my finger, I make sure that I move it around and I create an eye shadow. There's some steps missing here just because my battery died or I forgot to turn on the camera, not sure. But I repeated some of these so then you had idea of what I was doing. And also, if you don't have Distress Crayons, you can always go back to your normal and regular Distress Ink, like this one, Vintage Photo, or you could stick to the same one you were using before, put some on your craft sheet, and then with a little bit of water, just apply it with a brush. And there you go, this is the final design. I'm putting some pictures for you to see and have a look at all the details. I know it was a very long one, but as you saw or rather hurt, I didn't shut up for a minute, <laughs> so I tried to squeeze in as much info as I could. I hope that it made sense, guys. If not, you are always free to ask me a question and I will respond as soon as I can and as soon as my baby lets me do it. So, well, this is all for today. I hope you got inspired. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Leave me any comments. I really like to read them and reply them when I get time to do it. So. And make sure to actually go to the Paper Artsy blog and participate with your own coral version. Doesn't matter what you use, um, any coral inspiration will work. Post it there and you may be able to win a prize. That was all for today. Thanks very much for watching. 
please subscribe if you like these sort of videos and click the ring bell button so so you don't miss any future videos okay i'll leave you with two videos that i did in the past in case you like them thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye